Houthis released video showing what appears to be an attack earlier this week on the British oil vessel, the Cordelia Moon, in the Red Sea. The Houthis have vowed to maintain a naval blockade until Israel halts its war on Lebanon and the Palestinian territories. Meanwhile, Israel continues its relentless attacks on Gaza, with Israeli forces blowing up residential buildings near the new Sedat camp and civilian homes in Deir al-Balakh and Khan Yunis. Palestinian Health Ministry reports at least 14 people were killed and 50 wounded over the last 24 hours. Here in the United States, a group of nearly 100 physicians, nurses, surgeons, and midwives have sent a letter to President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris detailing, quote, crimes beyond comprehension they witnessed in Gaza. They're calling on the U.S. to support a ceasefire to end support for Israel's military and to back an international arms embargo on Israel. Part of the letter reads, quote, we wish you could see the nightmares that plagued so many of us since we've returned. Dreams of children maimed and mutilated by our weapons and their inconsolable mothers begging us to save them, unquote. An Israeli airstrike on the occupied West Bank has killed at least 18 Palestinians. On Thursday, Israeli fighter jets targeted a crowded cafe in the Tulkarum refugee camp, leaving behind twisted piles of wreckage and flaming debris. This is Nimer Fad, the brother of the cafe's owner who was killed in the attack. The missiles targeted a civilian building. A family was wiped from the civil registry. What was their fault? The family was asleep in their house. There's no safe place for the Palestinian people. The Palestinian people have the right to defend themselves. Israel's military claimed the bombing targeted the head of Hamas's infrastructure in Tulkarum. It was the largest and deadliest airstrike in the occupied West Bank in more than two decades. Here in the United States, union dock workers along the East Coast and Gulf Coast have ended a three-day strike and will resume negotiations for a new contract. A tentative agreement on pay for some 45,000 members of the International Longshoremen's Association will see workers' wages increase by 62% over the life of the contract. The union and the U.S. Maritime Alliance will extend the existing contract until mid-January to give negotiators more time to finalize a deal. In more labor news, Boeing's revoked health care benefits for some 33,000 aerospace workers who went on strike three weeks ago. In a statement supporting the workers, Vermont Independent Senator Bernie Sanders wrote, quote, Boeing's greed offers another perfect example of why we need Medicare for all, Sanders said. The death toll from Hurricane Helene has climbed to 213, making it one of the deadliest hurricanes to hit the United States since modern record-keeping began after Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Maria. Hundreds remain missing and are feared dead. More than half of the deaths were in North Carolina, where on Thursday, private helicopter companies joined efforts to bring aid to mountain communities cut off by flood damage. This is pilot Brooke Barzik, who delivered food, water, and other supplies to the hard-hit Swannanoa Valley. It's absolute devastation. Um, even just this valley through here is... is decimated and I think the one thing that stands out the most is even after it had it had been several days since it had happened there still was no aid here at all Vice President Kamala Harris rallied supporters on Thursday in the city of Ripon, Wisconsin, known as the birthplace of the Republican Party. Harris was joined on stage by Republican and former Wyoming Congress member Liz Cheney who's endorsed Harris for president. Liz Cheney really is a leader who puts country above party and above self, a true patriot, and it is my profound honor, my profound honor to have your support. Harris also thanked the Republican former Vice President Dick Cheney, Liz Cheney's father, one of the most influential architects of George W. Bush's invasion of Iraq for his endorsement. Speaking to Harris's supporters, Liz Cheney took aim at Donald Trump, calling him petty, vindictive, cruel, and depraved. During her three terms in Congress, Cheney voted against an assault weapons ban, earned an A rating from the anti-abortion group Pro-Life America, and expressed support for plans by Israel to annex parts of the occupied West Bank. Melania Trump has spoken publicly in favor of the right to have an abortion. The former first lady made the remarks in a video teasing the release of her new self-titled memoir. Without a doubt, 
There is no room for compromise when it comes to this essential right that all women possess from birth, individual freedom. What does my body, my choice really mean? Melania Trump's statement puts her at odds with most of the Republican Party, including her husband, Donald Trump, who's boasted about overturning the constitutional right to an abortion. On Saturday, Trump's planning to return to Butler, Pennsylvania, to rally supporters at the site of July's assassination attempt against him. He'll be joined on stage by billionaire Elon Musk. In Tennessee, three former Memphis police officers have been acquitted of violating the civil rights of Tyree Nichols, a 29-year-old black father who died after the officers brutally beat him during a traffic stop in January of last year. The jury found just one of the officers, Demetrius Haley, guilty of the lesser charge of violating Nichols' civil rights causing bodily injury. Haley, along with former officers to Darius Bean and Justin Smith, were all found guilty of witness tampering related to the cover-up of the deadly beating. Two other officers, Emmett Martin and Desmond Mills Jr., pleaded guilty to federal civil rights charges ahead of the trial. To see our coverage of Tyree Nichols, go to democracynow.org. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, at least 78 people were killed after a ferry boat capsized in eastern Lake Kivu. Though local authorities say the death toll could be significantly higher as rescue efforts continue, the disaster comes as an increasing number of people have been forced to cross Lake Kivu, often in overcrowded vessels as they attempt to reach Goma while avoiding travel across territory plagued by fighting between Congolese government forces and M23 rebels. Since there's no longer a road between Goma and Minova, many people are suffering. What happened is the government's fault. Only one boat, instead of two, left Minova today, and it took on double its usual load. If the road was operational, vehicles could have transported some of the people and goods. And Mexican authorities have arrested several soldiers involved in the fatal shooting Tuesday of six asylum seekers who were aboard a truck with over a dozen others when the soldiers opened fire. At least 10 people were injured. The group, many from Egypt, India, and Pakistan, had recently crossed into the southern Mexican state of Chiapas from Guatemala. Mexico's newly inaugurated president, Claudia Sheinbaum, condemned the attack as deplorable and called for an investigation. Mexican soldiers and police have been widely accused of human rights violations, including the massacre of asylum seekers, as Mexico collaborates with the Biden administration in a crackdown on people seeking refuge in the United States. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the war.